So now I want to continue where the previous uh, session stopped. In the first one, we showed you how to create the document, the document templates. In the second one, you show a very impressive real-time application using these documents. <coughs> and you already saw some parts of execution that emails are delivered. And now in the third one, we want to show you the output management system, which is behind such a, such a solution. So because to, to use things like that, it's very important to have a well-organized, structured system. And I will tell you from, from my 30 years of experience in the output management what I see out, out there. I can definitely tell you that it did not get easier over the years, in the last 30 years. So what's still very important, and from my point of view, one of the most important things is this integration. Yeah, you need to have a tightly integrated central output management system which allows other systems to connect with standard defined interfaces to use it and everything is in, in managed in one place. Yeah, this gives, leads to the next thing, control. Yeah, you can only run a production system like that when you have full control over things which are coming in and coming out. And this integration and control gives you the flexibility you need. Yeah, you need to service not like 30 years ago one output channel, which was central print. You need to service a variety of, of output channels, of communications with your, with your clients. And that's very important, especially when we see nowadays. When you stick to printed and, and now your print job is closed and does not service, then, then you're not, not operating anymore. And last thing also coming with these new technologies is security and reliability. So when opening now our network to our clients, it means that we need to have a special layer of security, not just system security, but also document security. And the second thing is reliability. When people are allowed to do their services on their own, you do not have opening hours. It must be 24-7 running, and that's also a challenge for the IT which must be managed. Thanks, Andy. Um, I want to go a little further on one of the points that you mentioned there. So you mentioned the uh, more output channels being available. And when we think about this type of growth, you know, it really is a, a, a fantastic opportunity for the business that they can then contact their customers on, on more channels. Um, and it, it really is important. So in my personal experience, you know, my father is still very paper-based. So if you go to, to his house back in the UK, there's a drawer full of invoices going back 15 years. He says he knows where everything is. Um, so he still needs paper and he wants paper and he will never switch everything over to email. Myself, I really prefer email, you know. I don't want to have to open up these letters every day. Uh, and I also don't want to have to throw away everything every day as well. So uh, for me, I'm looking at a slightly different channel. And I've switched personally for most of my communication to come via email. But again, there's another generation coming through, or already through. You know, I'm too old already. But uh, my daughter's generation, she wants everything on, on the phone. Uh, so, I mean, her ideal channel would be us delivering to her TikTok feed, for example. So we haven't got an adapter just yet for TikTok, but we're <laughs> maybe in the pipeline. What I'm trying to get to, though, is that it's important that uh, you as businesses realize that these channels are out there and that you can serve the customers to be able to make that contact with with your, uh, with your consumers, with your end, end customers. Um, and so it is a great opportunity, but the other side of that coin, and hence the double-edged sword, is that potentially this looks like it's more work as well. So does that mean that you've got to now duplicate or have triple or four different versions of that same document that you've got to create, maintain, and deliver? So that's something that we want to focus on to ensure that you don't have to have all this additional work every time. And as we saw in the previous communication, we really tried to work from a single source document approach. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Let's have a closer look to these output channels you were talking about. So since the 80s, I always heard that the paperless office was announced, but I can tell you printing is still very important. All the legal stuff was still printed, and, and so it's something you cannot ignore. On the other hand, then the newer output channels, like for example, email, like Rob mentioned, the, what, what I saw in the last project before this company did 90% of the output in the printed version. But when we enabled them to 
co to use the, the business correspondence in the email world too. They only use the printed version for these legal documents, and more than 50% of the output was switched to email, which is much faster and much cheaper. Yeah, the text messages we usually use to notify the customers, to send them a text message which is saying, your document is ready, please pick it up from, from our portal, and there's a link included where I can just click on it. Social, like Facebook, and that's also funny because my children, they do not use Facebook anymore. It's more my generation yeah, right. using Facebook. But, but I still like to use it to get uh, information from my community and so on. And if you support this channel, you will actually reach more people than, than they are just in your customer database. Then, as we heard, mobile is very common for, for younger people. And everything you also need to archive somehow so that you have access from within your company and also from outside your company. So also a very important output channel. So let's have a look again under the hood a little bit. So you may remember this uh, uh, picture from earlier on. I'm going to try to extend that a little bit now. So what we saw at the beginning, we were focused here on the right-hand side where we were looking at our business designer workplaces. And we're also then focusing a bit on the left-hand side where we were formatting that content. So taking those designs and then formatting the content. But of course, we got to deliver it. And we didn't talk about that yet. So the next components are the adapters, which we have there in the middle, which is taking that data, taking your data from your systems, uh, making use of the documents that we've created already, and formatting with the engine. And they're being delivered to the document pool. So the document pool is where we're collecting everything before sending it. Here we can do sorting, we can do bundling, we can potentially do post-processing here, reordering, we can uh, augment some of, the, some of the content, and we can wait for other bits of content to come. Maybe they've got another batch in Papyrus which is coming. We need to wait then in the document pool for that batch to arrive, that you can bundle everything together. Maybe you've got external content coming in here. You may have a Word document coming in or a, uh, an external PDF. So a document pool is a really important place uh, that we use to take stock, make sure we've got everything. And at this point, then, we can determine which output channel we need for which document. And we start then our delivery process. And from the document pool, you can see them then feeding out to these different channels. Yeah, let's have a more detailed look about what Rob told us. Usually, the process starts with your business application creating some business data. This business data is then formatted by a high volume formatting engine, which can be used for single documents the same way than millions of batch documents. So in one run, this formatter can produce output for all your output channels like HTML, PDF, and, and AFP. But the problem is that these output channels require sometimes slightly different formats. So our formatter is keeping all pages in the page buffer, and you can remove, add pages to this buffer so that the output will definitely fit to the output device you want to use. For example, a continuous feed in a continuous feed format where you use two up, you sometimes need to add a page so that there's a, a logic group always together. In a cut sheet printer, the other thing is, is sometimes needed so that you remove a page which looks ugly if it's there. Or if you have HTML, there's no, page, uh, there's no page in, pagination at all. Everything will be processed in, in one run. So very nice feature where you can do everything you need for all the output uh, channels in one run. The only problem is what happens if not everything is available at the same time. And then, as Rob mentioned, what we are using is our document pool. So you have a central storage where you can store documents from various sources. AFP created with our docexec, AFP created from other sources, PDF, but also Office documents you are creating uh, with the Office applications. Interactive correspondence, like we saw in the first uh, speech, everything is stored, including metadata inside this document pool, and then it can be used to augment these documents, to create, recreate, bundle things together which belong together. Yeah, it does not make sense to send three envelopes to one customer at the same time. Put everything into one envelope. Yeah, put in the page numbering and so on, on when all the documents are ready. You can add output management information, like barcode you see in the top document. Or if you put it electronically, PDF, you can add, for example, 
a marketing message and remove this barcode. Yeah, and then these documents, you can present them in the archive or in the portal. And if you put them in the archive, our business people can access them. So if someone is calling, they can access the same document and, and look at the same thing like the customer. But you can also use the portal to open it to your clients and to directly access the statements from there. And if a statement, for example, is not corrected by the client, you can always use the printed version and send it to the printer. So it's a very strong feature to use these combinations. So I just want to recap there a little bit as well. So we've seen some really nice, sophisticated features there. Um, but of course, the operations designer, so someone who is actually defining that output management process for you, is also provided with a very nice UI. So as we saw when Raphael very quickly created his, uh, his campaign process, using the operations designer view, you can really quickly start to build up these steps yourself. And you can use this as an IT person or potentially as a very skilled business person as well. Uh, they can start to drag and drop these different steps. So we generate our documents at the beginning. This is where your data is going to come in and format. And then we can just determine which other output steps we want here. And we can determine which document goes to which step, for example, based on the preferred output channel. And that's just an example. A lot of customers do like to do that. But of course, you can dictate that output channel as well. Perhaps um, at document level, you may ensure that all, all uh, uh, contracts, for example, have to be printed. So you can control that at document level, or you can allow the, business, uh, the end users to define which channel they want to receive that communication on. So we're going to keep building up my picture here. Uh, so we're really getting there now. Uh, so we've seen the document pool, and Andy gave us a really nice explanation of some of the more advanced features we've got there. Um, and what we also want to talk about then is delivering to our e-channels in particular. So here we've got the portal on the right-hand side. So we both name-checked the, the social deployment. Um, but of course, for web deployment or for, uh, for mobile, then that content's going to come out of the document pool, and it can be reached via the portal. So perhaps um, you want to expose the document in an SMS. You can have a hyperlink coming back to that document. And that's just going in over the portal, picking out that content, and showing it to the user. And that can be embedded in your interface. So maybe you've got your own website. Many of our customers uh, are doing this. We've got experience with several, or lots of customers who keep the content in Papyrus, but then expose the link to that content from their own secure website. So that's them pulling that out here. It means you're not distributing everything all over the place. And we should never forget about the archive. So it's just another channel for us, the archive. We're not doing any magic here. Just as we deliver out of the document pool for print, for portal, for, for, for web distribution, we distribute out to the archive too. So we provide the web archive as part of the Papyrus platform. But of course, we can integrate with your own archives. If you've got a third party system, then that's no problem to deliver and pull back content from here as well. The final piece of the puzzle, so I've really gone from top to bottom here in this design, is that we need to know what happened after that delivery as well. So we're going to come to the reporting a bit later. But it's very important, particularly when you're delivering to e-channels, to understand that your document really got there. So if, uh, if a letter doesn't reach a customer, then that could bounce back, and you may find out that it was undelivered. But if an email doesn't reach, and it's far more likely that an email doesn't get there because email addresses are no longer used or the server no longer exists, then you need to be able to react. So this feedback loop of whether that email arrived and what we should do if it didn't arrive is again controlled in Papyrus. So we get that information back. It goes back to where we created that first email and says, hey, that email doesn't work. What should we do now? Should we try and print this document and try and hit them with another channel? Or do we need to open up then a customer service case and say, hey, we've got these 10 customers who didn't get that email. Someone needs to go out, find out what their email address is, update it, and we need then to resend these documents. So what I want to show you now is a real-world example. <coughs> so 
in the initial phase of the project, the IT was helping in the developing, designing of document templates, mainly doing data interfaces and things like that, which you see on the, on the left-hand side. And then mainly the business was creating their document templates uh, with our business designer, building blocks, reusable, reusable elements and so on, as you saw, and building up, filling a library with all documents they need to, to cover their, their processes. So when this is done, then usually uh, data triggers the processing of, of the data. In this case, it's a REST adapter, which is receiving some, some data, and whenever it receives some data, some of the uh, information in the data tells the system which template to use, and then it's creating output in various output formats and storing this output in our archive and also in our portal. In this case, they're using their own portal. It's a third-party portal to provide this. With email or text messages, we inform the clerk, the, the client, that something is there, and so he can access directly from the, from the portal his documents and can see them. And whenever he's not receiving them in a given time, then we can reproduce it using the print pool, using, for example, output channel print and printing it there. So the way they are doing it there is first they are sending out emails to all of their clients. And if there is a problem with an, with an email, they look into their customer database whether they have a fax number for this client as well. If there is a fax number, then they are resending the documents, the fax version of the documents, using the fax channel. And if there is no fax number or even the fax could not be delivered, then everything is sent to the, to the central print. So you see you can even cover very complex output management processes in a very secure and fast way. This was a really, just before we go on, this was a really interesting project. And both Andy and I were, were deeply involved in this one. And I was there when the first batch ran and they delivered all these emails. And Andy's being very modest, actually, it does a lot more than even what they're talking, what he mentions here. There's bundling going on in the background, too. But the really interesting thing I saw was that we had the business also watching this first batch, so everyone was keeping their fingers crossed. Everything from our side worked perfectly, of course. Um, but the interesting thing was once all these bounces started to come back, we have a bounce handling UI, and this UI just completely filled. So I suddenly got a bit worried and thought, oh no, have we done something wrong? Of course we hadn't. It was truly bounced email. So they sent out 30,000 emails, and I think maybe four or 5,000 of yeah, them yeah, bounced about that, about that. A, a lot. And uh, the business were completely shocked. And uh, I thought, oh no, they're going to be mad. So, but actually, they were quite happy because even though it was a shock, they now know that they've been sending out these emails for a year or two and they'd never actually reached anyone, but they just didn't know. So there's some poor guy at this company now probably still going through that list of 4,000 customers trying to find out the correct email address. But the business was super happy that we identified this problem that they didn't even know that they had at the beginning. So I did mention reporting a little bit already, particularly when we're talking about that feedback loop, we're talking about bounce handling. And in, in ADF, uh, so in output delivery, I think here is one of the most important places where you really need that control. So again, as I mentioned earlier on, the reporting framework can report on any single piece of information we store in the web repository. Uh, so for our output management people and for the business, it's super important to know that if I sent 3,851 documents to Papyrus to be generated and output to multiple channels, how many of those documents really went out? Did they all go out? Because the worst thing is not knowing, uh, particularly if they're uh, legal documents, not knowing whether they've been delivered or not can leave you feeling unsecure and can add an element of risk to your business. So we can provide search interfaces like this. So this is a, an example that we provide out of the framework, but of course this is configurable for you, where you can see the individual batches that we've been sending. Uh, and in that batch, you see the breakdown as well. You see what channel has been hit, how many documents went to each channel. And even, I mean, usually you don't want to go so far down, but you can even go down to the individual documents. So you're looking here at the document pool or in the, in the document archive. So those numbers really need to match, and that's what everyone wants to know at the end of the month. Did everything that I send really go through, and what do we do with the things that didn't? Because only then can you sleep well at night thinking, yes, everything I did has really gone out to who I wanted to send it to. Yeah. Now let's have a, a real uh, 
look into a system like that, it's not just like it was in the past, one mainframe system which is holding all this information. We are talking now about distributed system, huge system where you have central printers in one location, distributed printers all over the world. You have formatting engines running on various platforms. Yeah, and you need to get all these things together. And on the other hand, you need the control. You need to deliver 24-7 high availability, as we mentioned. Yeah, that's, that's a requirement to, to feed your business. Yeah, scalability. So at the end of the month, you need to process maybe 10 times more stuff than, than you do before Christmas or end of the year. Yeah, so it's really important that you have a very well hub in the middle of it to keep control of, part of all these things. They need to get one in, back into one place so that you really can focus on what's happening in your system and how to, how to deal with it. So let's have a look on our user interface, the ADF cockpit, how I can handle this one. We have various views inside this one to make your, the management of such a complex system easy. So the job view is giving you, like the console was in the, in the mainframe times, it's giving you in one place a complete overall view of what's happening in the system. Yeah, at the bottom you see the system log. So it's really showing each line what's happening right now in, in real time. And if you see a lot of red, uh, lines there, then you should act immediately. Yeah, on top you see the jobs which are running at the moment. There are three jobs, the blue one which are processing at the time, one is an error which needs to be something to, to do immediately. One other job uh, is running since 25 hours, that means also you need to, to react there. Yeah, if you go to the details of this view, you can see each step. So in this example, the first step is formatting. It's already finished. And now there are three steps, three further steps waiting that someone is signing them off so they can continue. Also here you can have fire principle, for example. Yeah? Then we still have here the queue view. For example, for print management, the print operator can see each printer what they're doing, how many documents are in the print queue and so on. So also full control for operating here. With the view uh, search function, you can search for documents, for example, if you need to reprint something or regenerate something, you can use the contract number, the, the address, the name, whatever you know from, from this document and just search for it and, and recreate it. And then the last thing, as Rob mentioned, very important is control. So you have a fully integrated reporting system which tells you how many documents are sent to which output channel, print, fax, email, whatever. And you can even do this in, in real time if you want to see what's happening right now in your system. So let's do a, a recap on the full platform. As we heard, it usually starts with the adapters, with the data at the beginning. So you have your data. This data are received by the formatting engine, which is using resources and text building block to create these documents. Then these documents can be printed or sent immediately, but usually we store them in our print buffer, yeah, in the print pool for further processing. Inside this print pool, you can also add, for example, uh, business correspondence created by our clerks, or additional things like terms and conditions or marketing messages you get with PDF in PDF format. Everything is stored in this document pool. And in a further step, you collect out of this document pool what you want to put together in one envelope, for example, or in, in one communication. Yeah? In this example, first step is printing. So you put barcode on it, you send it to the enveloping machine, and you send it out. But in the same run, you can also create electronic output in HTML format and deliver it to, to mobile devices. Archiving is important, and also recreation, this automated uh, uh, reprint or, or recreate if something is missing can be done fully integrated. And last but not least, the control, reporting, and management from one central place like I showed you in this job view. So if you have a platform like that, this really ensures you that you can cover all your output management needs you will ever face at the moment in your system. So, Andreas. Yeah. Ah, you got questions. <laughs> good, good, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm prepared. <laughs> I got some questions too. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, actually, um, there is one really uh, good question, I think, from our audience. They want to know how you would implement uh, a digital channel such like mobile. So that's the first thing is always to create the output. Yeah, you need to have the HTML interface. And then with our portal, you have immediately access to this one. We have an app 
which you can download from, from the apps of Android and, and, and I, iOS. And with this app, it's like a monitor you connect to our portal and you see the same thing in your mobile device like you see in your browser, for example. So right. really easy. And the HTML5 I get from DocExec or? HTML5 we produce and we can also use your HTML5 layouts and just populate it with our data. So it's very flexible here. Okay. And the last question is really about the best practices about uh, output management. Where do you see this going? Somebody is asking. So what, what I can see that to maintain the, the systems which were growing over the last 10 years is getting more and more complicated if they do not have an architecture. Yeah, so you need to have this full integration. Best would be to have an enterprise service bus, a standard interface to all your applications, and then you can service everything in one place, like we saw in, in mm -hmm. with this job overview, with this cockpit. You see everything which going out and uh, coming in and going out, and this control is the most important thing, I guess. Yeah? I see. I see. So the hub. Right. Will help. Right. The hub is actually the solution for So, and that's things. where this to is keep all going. Under one umbrella. Okay. Thank you Thank both you. again. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.